Hello friends, Flaky here. Steam Next Fest is finally upon us, and with it comes an update to the Spellshot demo, with the main headliners being meta progression and run affixes. So if you want, you can check out the full list of Steam patch notes in the description. Alright, so let's get right into it. Upgrades. By completing rounds, you now gain vouchers, which you can use to permanently upgrade your strength. The motivation behind this system was to help out players who might be struggling by letting them specifically target their weak points and address things such as maybe mana issues, health issues, gold, whatever. You can purchase these upgrades to make your experience a bit easier, but not right off the bat. You have to earn the vouchers by completing rounds. So alongside this, we now have run affixes. This system is akin to the Pact of Punishment in Hades or Slate of Spire's Ascensions. So in Spellshot, once you beat round 10 for the first time, you unlock Promotion 1. Playing with Promotion 1 enabled will give you more vouchers but make the run harder. These affixes include making gems more expensive, having enemies hit harder, uh, bringing in elites one that round earlier, you know, among other things. So the motivation behind this system was to provide a challenge for skilled players and especially uh, people like Kalemi and I who have, you know, hundreds of hours in the demo uh, and wanted to see, okay, when things are really tight, what are the best spells? What are the best items? Because if the game is really easy, it doesn't matter. So this, this provides that challenge for players uh, without making the base game insanely hard. So with this system now in the game, we were able to address something related that I saw a lot in the demo, which was people not making it past the earlier rounds and seeing the cool item gym combinations or the special enemies. So before the upgrades and promotions, our game essentially had one difficulty. And once we added promotions, we were able to make the base experience easier and add that extra challenge back into the promotion mode. So the game's easy to get into, but hard to beat at the highest level. Um, we balanced a bunch of things, changed some of the, the enemies, how much damage they do to you, player starting mana, a uh, cost of all the gems and the upgrades. So if you don't play a lot of FPS games and you struggle with the last version of our demo, I highly suggest giving it another shot. We now have new music. The old music was a single event containing multiple 22 second long layered tracks that faded in on top of each other according to what round you were on. So this did a great job of keeping the music's tempo and tension in line with the game, but there was also little variety because after round six or seven, when all the layers have faded in, you were hearing the same 22 second loop over and over again, uh, which would get very repetitive. So our friend Cray, who makes the music uh, is also very good at making tracks that rise and fall and last three to five minutes long. So ultimately we decided to make shuffle playlist that plays these longer, more varied songs, enabling us to add more as develop goes on. So get into the game and, and listen to those if you haven't already. Staying on the audio side of things, uh, Clemmy pointed out a while back that when you were upstairs in the cellars, you could hear the zombie footsteps below at nearly full volume, which was kind of off-putting and strange. And this was because we had no audio occlusion. So the volume of our sounds were based solely on range, which it's a uh, 3D sphere-shaped emitter. So if you're on floor two and the zombies are on floor one, that range basically says, oh, he's right there. He's you know only a few meters away from me. He should hear this at high volume. It doesn't take the geometry of the level into account. So using Raycast and FMOD's resonance audio sources, that has now been changed. We also redesigned the HUD to make the next spell icon display more prominently. This is a minor change, but it may connect that final dot for players that each gym affects a single bullet, which I you know, don't think everyone understood. Uh, the reload has been reworked, so many people mentioned how 
they were running out of mana very quickly. And I even watched some players experience this issue in real time. Most of which was caused by reloading prematurely. So our old reload system threw out the remaining bullets in your mag and moved the current gym pointer back to the start. So when you reloaded, your next gym would always be, you know, the leftmost one in the UI. We had the reload throw out unused bullets because we did not want players to abuse the reload to always move back to their first gym slot. Essentially not needing to buy any more gems. Shoot, reload, shoot, reload, shoot, reload. That was our reasoning then. That's why we made those changes. That's why we designed the reload like that. But uh, now we just see that it caused more problems than it solved. It's not a common mechanic in games. People don't think that that's gonna happen when they reload. They're gonna lose all their ammo uh, if you reload early. So we're, we're no longer moving the pointer when you reload. Your gun just constantly round robins through your gems. You can still set up spell synergies this way, putting spells right next to each other. Um, and now if you're a frequent reloader, you're no longer punished. So next is Destructibles, something we had in our old racing game Flash Drive. It's a small but fun little thing that is relatively easy to implement. Uh, looks nice, sounds nice, fun to do, fun to shoot and knife the crates and the barrels. It also let us put things inside like mana or health uh, for players who might be needing a bit more. So one thing that was on our backlog for a while was getting a free gem of your current shop tier plus one when you triple, maxing out of course at the max shop tier, which is three right now. So this is a common mechanic in games with a re-rolling shop, so auto, auto chest like games. It adds a nice bit of RNG to base builds, to base builds off of, um, and it lets you make the best decisions with what you're given. So it also, if you're a new player, gives a bit of direction of what gems you should collect if you don't know what it's best. So the default is just, ooh, I already have that one. I see another one. Let me grab it. Let me combine. Let me triple. Uh, this was not something we planned on adding in this update. It was just added in this past week, but it makes the game much more interesting. All right, finally, quick fire time. Hold the shoot is in. Not something I ever thought of initially, but a common request. We tried it out much nicer on the fingers. We did have to update Unity to get this because there was a bug where the hold to shoot would get stuck, but luckily no problems when updating. And mouse keybinds. So you can now rebind shoot in ADS. The bind left, uh, you can bind left and right click as well. Uh, you can also bind side mouse buttons. Uh, we did have a bug with this because one of the side buttons is registered under back, which is also how we canceled the rebind in the options menu. So we changed that to keyboard slash escape, but there was a bug in our old Unity version that made the E key escape as well. So you could effectively not bind E and also have a way to back out mid binding. So that just gave us another reason to update to Unity 2022. All right, so how does the game play now versus the last devlog? Well, I think it's less punishing now the changing music Cray made is really nice. Generally keeps me more engaged in the game. And the free gem on triple feels great as well. It really adds a bit of spice to each one you run you do because you have to adapt to what you're given. So there's still a lot of work to do. We've been working on the Slimeworks map, which you can see some preview images of it in the background. And on top of that, I'm still not totally satisfied with the core gameplay loop. There needs to be more reasons to explore the map. We almost have two games going on at the moment, one within the shop and one within the world, and they're very much disconnected, uh, which I don't think is a good thing. But uh, that is all I have for now. So thank you very much for watching, everyone. I hope you have a good rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.